Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first of many video series. Uh, this is an in intermediate level. And in case you're wondering if, what, what level you're at, um, if you already know the basics of poker, so you know, you know what a bet and a raise and a call is, and, and you know what makes a strong hand, you know when you have a flush, uh, but you're trying to improve your game, you're in the right spot. Um, if you don't know what those things are and you're a beginner poker player, I refer back to our beginner poker series where we start with the very basics about how to play poker. Um, if you're possibly more advanced and you want to learn about more advanced concepts, so if you're interested in learning about things like uh, range merging, balance and unbalanced rages, GTO versus exploitative type of play, if those are the more advanced topics you're interested in, then you can uh, feel free to go check out our more advanced series. But this is our intermediate, intermediate series um, where we're going to wor work on improving your poker game. Um, some introductions are in order. Uh, my name is Dr. Adriel Bowles. Uh, I am a professor of psychology at the University of North Texas, uh, where I'm also the director of behavioral sciences. Uh, when I'm not torturing my students, uh, I'm trying to torture my opponents at the poker table. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of the, the, the tricks that I've learned over the years and from other poker pros. Um, I'm also vice president of Hobnob Gaming, along with my colleague, Dr. Scott Bublitz, where we're trying to design a website and an app where folks can go and play poker in a very social, interactive type manner. Um, but you came here today to, to improve your poker game, so, so let's get right into it. And actually, I'm going to teach uh, this the way I, same way I would teach my classes when I teach at the university, uh, and that's relying on, on PowerPoint presentations. So today I want to focus a little bit on, on calling ranges. And by calling ranges, I mean when you get dealt your first two cards, well, which card should you be playing, which cards should you uh, call and raise with, and which hand should you not be playing, which hands should you be folding. Uh, it's one of the first and most important decisions that you'll make in a poker hand. So the short answer is play very tight preflop. And I cannot stress that enough. By tight, I mean you're playing very conservative. You're only playing premium hands, only very, very strong hands. Um, and specifically, what do I mean by very strong hands? Well, I mean hands like, obviously, pocket aces, the strongest possible hand you can have, but on down to other pocket pairs as low as pocket tens. So that includes pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, pocket kings, and pocket aces. We definitely want to be playing and raising with those hands. Um, a lot of our aces, especially ace ten and higher, so ace ten, ace jack, uh, ace queen, ace king, these are definitely, these are hands that are very strong. We want to play them, especially if they're suited, uh, then that, that gives them extra strength. Uh, king queen, it, it's a pretty good hand. It's pretty strong. We would, we prefer this hand to be suited, meaning, you know, they're the same suit. They're, they're both hearts or two diamonds, but even king queen not suited uh, is still strong enough to go ahead and, and play, and in some cases even raise with this hand. And I'd also encourage you to play what we call suited connectors. Suited connectors means they're hands that are suited, they're the same suit, uh, and they're one from each other. So for instance, six of, six of diamonds, seven of diamonds, or jack of hearts and the 10 of hearts. Uh, these hands, because of their possibility of make, making both straights and flushes, that type of potential makes them strong enough to go ahead and be uh, playing and raising with, with these hands. Um, so we wanna play very, very tight preflop. I've heard a couple people say that poker really is a game in which we are redistributing wealth from imp impatient people to more patient people. And I think what that means is that for people who are impatient and they wanna just play lots and lots of hands, they're, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose long-term and they're gonna be giving their money away to the more patient people. So I know playing very tight pre-flop, it's, to be honest, it's a very boring style of play. You know, 80% of the time when you get dealt two cards, you're just gonna fold them and watch other people play, play poker. And that can be very, very boring. And that, that's why uh, it's difficult to be a winning poker player. Now, if your goal is to just have fun and you don't want to play a boring style, you want to play a fun style, then by all means, go ahead and play, you know, a wide variety of different hands pre-flop. Just know that you're probably going to end up losing with a lot of those hands. So if you want to have fun, go ahead and play lots of hands pre-flop. But if your goal is to become a winning poker player, there's no getting around this. You have to be patient and you need to only play premium hands. You know, when I was an early poker player, there was something about queen jack. I loved playing queen jack, and I played it all the time. I called raises out of position with queen jack because I just thought it was a really strong hand. I did not fully appreciate that that's basically a garbage hand. It really is. And sure, I won a couple of really nice pots with, with queen jack, but the real truth is 
if you play queen jack a hundred times, you're gonna lose way more than you end up winning with that hand because it's just not strong enough hand to, to, to win consistently with. You wanna only play the hands that you can consistently win with, not win with every now and then. Um, so I'm gonna keep this fairly short because the, these videos will, will each be very short, but we're gonna uh, we're, we'll come back in the next video. We'll be talking a little bit about position where even though I say you need to play very tight pre-flop, and that is true, um, it needs to be even more so when you're in early position, so you can actually loosen up on this strategy when you're in later position. And we'll go into that a bit more detail in our next video series.